a reading from the prophet Amos. It is the Lord who speaks. That day I will re-erect the tottering hut of David, make good the gaps in it, restore its ruins, and rebuild it as it was in the days of old, so that they can conquer the remnant of Edom and all the nations that belonged to me. It is the Lord who speaks, and he will carry this out. The days are coming now, it is the Lord who speaks, when harvest will follow directly after ploughing, the treading of grapes soon after sowing, when the mountains will run with new wine, and the hills all flow with it. I mean to restore the fortunes of my people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them, plant vineyards and drink their wine, dig gardens and eat their produce. I will plant them in their own country, never to be rooted up again out of the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord speaks peace to his people. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. Peace for his people and his friends and those who turn to him in their hearts. The Lord speaks peace to his people. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. The Lord speaks peace to his people. The Lord will make us prosper and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him and peace shall follow his steps. The Lord speaks peace to his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. John's disciples came to Jesus and said, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of mourning as long as the bridegroom is still with them. But the time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunken cloth onto an old cloak because the patch pulls away from the cloak and the tear gets worse. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins burst, the wine runs out and the skins are lost. No, they put new wine into fresh skins and both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Elizabeth of Portugal was actually from Spain <laughs> to begin with, um, and then married King Denis of Portugal in the 1200s. And she's famed for being a peacemaker. So there are three moments particularly that stick out. The first being that she, as a, as a noble woman, the, the wife of the king, um, helped to facilitate conversations, uh, political conversations, around the um, firming up of the border between Spain and Portugal, which, as far as I know, is still the border today, the one that was agreed in that um, 14th century agreement, uh, aided by Queen Elizabeth. The second one was uh, during a civil war later in the 1300s between um, within Portugal um, and her own husband, King Dennis, and her son, Afonso, uh, were on opposing sides and they were uh, threatening hatred to each other. Legend goes that uh, Elizabeth got on a horse 
and physically got between the two men on the battlefield, forcing peace or, or, or demanding or, or exhorting, I suppose, exhorting peace between them. And it worked. And a year later, uh, Afonso pledged allegiance to the king once more, and there was peace. And the third time was at the end of her life, where there was a, a battle raging between, um, again, her son <laughs> and the king of Spain, so cross-border war. And it, she was in her final illness, um, very weak, and yet went to the, the place of the battle uh, where the, the troops were gathered and again exhorted peace and again it worked. However, that for her was such a, a, a strain in her weak health that that was the beginning of her, her death and she died not long afterwards. And it was that moment that particularly struck me when I was reading about her life, that peace costs and that, you know, every one of the saints, uh, the Lord wants to live something through them. It's the same for you and it's the same for me. He wants to live something through us that's like, in a way, a prism, a prism of light shows particular light through different angles of the prism. God is the gift himself. God is the one who raises up all these wonderful things. And yet in the saints, he does different things. And so in Elizabeth, we see his longing for unity among men and women and the cost that he's willing to pay for that unity. I found it very interesting in the first reading. I mean to restore the fortunes of my people Israel. I will plant them in their own country out of the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is from the prophet Amos, who um, we've heard from from Monday onwards this week. And his, his prophecies are, are scary, are, are challenging, very challenging to read. Because we see the wrath of God. We see how God has been hurt by our injustices and how God longs for justice and peace to reign. And towards the end of Amos' writing, it's God himself who's going to work that peace. And how? Ultimately, by dying on the cross. The land that he promised to, uh, to the people of this time was the actual land of Israel. Of course, we're not promised a, a geographical land now. You know, in this new covenant, the covenant in the Lord Jesus' blood, our homeland is a spiritual one. Our homeland is the church, not the institution, but the assembly of God's people. The assembly of God's people united by the word of God, the sacraments of the church, and with an expectation that our, our homeland is to come, as St. Paul says to the Philippians, that our homeland is in heaven. That's ultimately where new wine will flow. And the price, as we were saying earlier in the week, the price that God was willing to pay for that was his own life, his own blood, his own blood spilling over the mountains. That's the wine we drink. The wine we drink now is the Lord's own blood. And it's every time we celebrate the Mass, that it's the body and the blood of the Lord that looks like bread and wine, but we, we believe has changed totally into his blood. His, his life source in this month of the precious blood, this month of July. We drink the life of the Lord. There is no wine greater than that. And the abundance of that wine, as St. John tells us in uh, the, the first miracle of Jesus at the, the wedding at Cana, we see the abundance that the Lord wants to spill over his people. And it doesn't come free. It comes at the cost of his life. And for you and me, brothers and sisters, Peace on earth will come at the cost of, yes, our life. Our life. Whatever that looks like, whether that's our actual life, our physical life, or whether it's in dying to ourself over and over again to, to bring peace, yes, in the world, but also in our, our household, in ourself, perhaps, where things rage 
in our home where, where we rage with each other, that's where we're called to die so that peace can reign. Let's ask Saint Elizabeth of Portugal, for whom this wasn't easy and yet was the way the Lord wanted to work through her. A noble woman, a woman of high rank, a woman of wealth, and yet able to use those material gifts for the building up of the kingdom. That's always our call. So we ask her to, to bring us before the Lord and uh, that the Lord might work through us for whatever miracles it is he's trying to do.